The Hamiltonian manifold theorem states that combinatorial manifolds define graphs which admit the Hamiltonian cycle, a closed path which visits every vertex exactly once. Here we see such a manifold, it's the icosahedron. It is a graph with 12 vertices, 30 edges and 20 triangles. We can construct the Hamiltonian cycle as follows. Start with a closed path along the unit cycle of the unit circle of a vertex, then add a detour to cover the wheel graph and do the same on the other side. So we have now two cycles which together cover all vertices. We still have to join them, but that's easy by rerouting around the boundary of a diamond graph formed by two adjacent triangles. We have now a Hamiltonian cycle. The class of graphs we are dealing with is defined recursively. First declare that the D sphere is a finite simple graph for which all unit spheres are D minus one spheres and for which there exists a vertex which when removed renders the graph contractible. A graph is contractible if there exists a vertex x such that both the unit sphere as well as the graph without x are contractible. And these inductive definitions are primed by the assumption that the empty graph is the minus one sphere and that the minus one point graph is contractible. A d graph is a finite simple graph for which all spheres are d minus one spheres. A d graph with boundary either has unit spheres which are d minus one spheres or unit spheres which are d minus one balls. Punctured spheres. A combinatorial manifold is a D graph or a D graph with boundary. The theorem tells that combinatorial manifolds are strongly Hamiltonian. This means that we can find a Hamiltonian path which intersects every facet large simplex in an edge. The proof is constructive and shows that the construction of Hamiltonian cycles is easy on this class of graphs. The result is a bit more general. One can extend it to generalized D graphs, graphs for which also, which also allow simplices as unit spheres where the near boundary is assumed to be accessible. So here are two simple examples. You see to the left a two ball and a triangulation of a two-dimensional disk and a two sphere to the right, triangulation of a two-dimensional Euclidean sphere. Note however that we never ref refer to Euclidean space when defining the graphs. Here are two more examples. You see in each case that the graph is organized dimensionally. Every unit sphere is either a one ball or a one sphere. To the left we see a discrete two torus, to the right a discrete cylinder. There's a bit of a snack to the right here, as a unit sphere of one vertex is a simplex and not a ball. It is only a generalized two cylinder therefore, but still uh, it's Hamiltonian. There are two more examples, there are three more examples of generalized two balls, They're all Hamiltonians. The stellated diamond to the left has no interior point so that they don't have to worry about the uh, accessibility. So here are uh, enemies of Hamiltonian property. So two examples ex uh, show this stellated wheel graph to the left. Interior point is not accessible to the right. Uh, we still see a stellated octahedron. It's also not Hamiltonian. So here uh, the illustration there is a Hamilton the Hamiltonian cycle has to go along the boundary. It's forced to go along the boundary. You cannot reach the interior. It's not a Hamiltonian graph. Uh, here we see to the right a uh, non-Hamiltonian example, the windmill, windmill graph and the barycentric refinement to the left has now become uh, Hamiltonian. But it's not always the case, there's no relation in general between barycentric refinements for general graphs. And uh, Avicii graph to the left is Hamiltonian, gardner harari graph, that's a prototype of a non-Hamiltonian graph. And to the right we see a generalized two graph which is Hamiltonian. So again, the Gardner-Harari graph, it's kind of you take this Avicii graph and then stellate it. And then if you look at the unit spheres, they are not balls or spheres or simplices. They are only generalized balls. And uh, also for the barycentric refinement, we still don't have a manifold structure. There are still unit spheres which are not balls or spheres or simplices. That's here the obstacle for the Hamiltonian property. The more generalized two uh, graphs, which are all Hamiltonian, a two graph, a three sphere, and a generalized three graph, They're all Hamiltonian. Uh, here we see an, another problem for non-Hamiltonian, for Hamiltonian, which is that the connectivity fails at the, the left example. And to the right we see a two graph with boundary where the theorem uh, applies. Stellated equosahedron, so not ha Hamiltonian for similar reasons than the golden Harari graph, stellated tetrahedron, here it works uh, by chance. Uh, the two graphs uh, which are Hamiltonian's theorem covers covers them more examples of uh, 
such graphs. So our general, uh, result generalizes the theorem of Hassler Whitney, who proved it in 1931, the two spheres of Hamiltonian, as part of his thesis. He proved the equivalent result that the four connected maximally planar graph is Hamiltonian. Here is Hassler Whitney, a remark remarkable mathematician. Another result of his is the Whitney embedding theorem, which assures that the manifold can be embedded in a sufficiently large Euclidean space. He received at the age of 14, 22, and 24. He climbed a lot also in Switzerland. Uh, at one point, the topologists Deram, Alexander, and Whitney met while climbing in the Alps, actually not far away from, uh, we just come from vacation there, where I actually wrote up the last part of this paper. In order to prove our theorem, we cut the graph up. Given a locally injective function f, we can define level surfaces in a d-graph and prove that it's always a d-1 graph if c is not in the image of f. There's a discrete Sartre theorem which tells that the level surface is either empty or a d-1 graph. You will see examples of level surfaces constructed like that in a three-dimensional graph defined by a random function, random coloring. They look pretty wild, but they are all two graphs, uh, actually. Uh, introduced this uh, and uh, originally for visualizing eigenfunctions of Laplacians. Here we see actually eigenfunctions, nodal regions of eigenfunctions of Laplacian uh, of some uh, two-dimensional spheres. Some ideas about constructing Hamiltonian cycles. Uh, we start with a two ball here. Uh, the one idea is to split the graph up, cut it in, into two, and then we see that we can just uh, find a Hamiltonian cycle in one part, Hamiltonian cycle in the other, and then we have just to put them together. Uh, this can be a little bit tricky to implement and to prove that this always work. Another uh, uh, approach is to cut holes, make it make it smaller. Uh, but also here, uh, it's actually more, uh, and then here in this case, we, we, we have a, the Hamiltonian cycle uh, after joining the cycles. Uh, but the method which we actually use then in the end is a Swiss cheese approach. Uh, this is a two sphere, uh, which has produced this three dimensional Swiss cheese. <laughs> the idea is to take a graph and cut holes so that almost everything is, bound, is boundary. Now build the Hamiltonian pass on the boundary and reach for the remaining points nearby. Uh, you see an example, so we have cut the holes, uh, extend, extend one of the holes a little bit so to reach that point nearby also, and then reach for the uh, other points uh, nearby and join the various Hamiltonian paths for subgraphs. So the, the, this is a constructive proof, uh, which a computer in principle could do. You can use the fact that the boundary is Hamiltonian, you only have to join in different parts and extend the Hamiltonian cycle to nearby points. Uh, so we here see, see that here in a uh, two-dimensional case again, so we cut the holes, connect them to the to the boundary, then extend them here a little bit, and uh, then reach out for the nearby points, and have the Hamiltonian cycles. So this produced the following uh, Hamiltonian uh, cycle. It's like a looks a little bit like a Peano uh, curve. In high dimensions, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, thanks for listening. You can check out the write-up for more details.